Hey, it's a marvelous Monday. Welcome to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, the Bullioness, a Silver Level Associate and a top recruiter at 7K Metals. Do join me in welcoming my return guest, economics and precious metals buff, A.G. Leveraged. Welcome to the show, A.G. Hi, Dawn. How are you today? (laughs) I'm great. So on today's show, we're going to be discussing why gold is important. So let's get to it. So, A.G., why, in your opinion, is physical gold so important to be part of our portfolio or part of our savings? So we're in a moment in time when the the dollar bills aren't even physical now. They're digits on a screen, and these digits are being created by the central banks uh, via the Fed in the in the in the billions, numbering in the billions on a daily basis. Uh, again, it's not just the Federal Reserve in the U.S. It's it's the European Union. It's all central banks. It's Japan. It's China. Everyone is printing. Well, it, it's called printing printing to no end but the truth is they're just little digital numbers that appear on a screen and these little di- digital numbers are in turn being used to buy the bonds that no one is buying any longer the stocks that no one is buying any longer so we're creating artificial dollars to buy artificial stocks and bonds that are evaluated artificially artificially high that is so in a world of, of, of illusion and make-believe, and again, this is where our stocks, our CDs, and certainly all our pensions are invested in stocks and bonds. In a world where, when such is the case, when our retirement and our savings and our wealth is stored primarily in these, it is of super utter, utter importance for us to purchase gold, again, not in an ETF form, not in a stock form, but in an actual physical form that we then have in our own possession. Now, now when I say have in our own possession, our goal is to have a certain amount. Naturally, once we achieve whatever desired goal amount we have in mind, we then perhaps take it to a second or third location that is outside of our reach and perhaps outside of our home where it's very safe. Uh, and we can talk, talk about that in future dates if you'd like, Don, as well. But my I would point love is, that. But my point is to have physical gold and silver, and I say silver because it's so much more affordable when compared to gold right now, um, but precious metals that is in our possession in a moment of, of just sheer uncertainty. Why do some people prefer gold over silver or silver over gold? So gold at... Uh, it just today it dropped at under 1500 per ounce. I think it's at 1473 per ounce. Silver right now drop um, is also, I believe, at uh, 17, close to 17 dollars an ounce, having been at nine, almost 19 dollars an ounce just a couple of weeks ago. Um, people prefer gold to silver. Gold is still viewed as money. It's 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 um if it, it's viewed as not just a a safe haven asset. In other words, it's something that that countries, sovereign countries, and corporations and and central banks use as money back and forth. Uh, it's also a, a hedge against fiat currencies. So let me separate that real quickly. So a haven asset would be something uh, akin to a U.S. Treasury, to a dollar bill, so to speak, which is supposed to have the most trust because it's the most liquid. Well. Gold has that comparison, not just in its 5,000 plus years of existence throughout the, the number of civilizations that have existed, where gold has carried its ability to trade for, for effort, for sweat equity, for time and energy, for, for the purchase of goods and services and commodities, um, but also most recently in, in all the recent uh, financial crises that have existed from the depression and the recent recessions to other civilizations, the demise of their own uh, uh, rough economies. Um, academic research uh, proves that gold is, is a safe haven asset, especially in a moment like today when we're all headed towards, we are all meaning all, all governments are headed towards zero interest rates and now negative interest rates. 
you know, we're in a world where it's estimated that there are approximately $250 trillion in global assets, in global debt, pardon me. That is an enormous amount of debt. So certainly gold from that perspective is, is a safe haven asset. As a hedge against uh, fiat currencies, what that means specifically is that you want to have it as a hedge against declining stock markets, declining bond markets. And like we said a moment ago, that's where the majority of our savings, 401K, deferred comp, pensions, IRAs, they're dependent on stock and bonds. So for those reasons, gold makes incredible sense as a hedge as well. Excellent. And can you go into just for a moment, um, or however long, um, what is the gold to silver ratio? What does that mean? It's the number of silver ounces that are purchasable when compared to gold. So right now, and I apologize, I'm not looking at the graph right now, but it's been at 83 to almost 90 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. Now that's enormously skewed. That is is a recent idea. Recent meaning within the last, I'm going to say, 50 years, something, 50, 60 years. I just finished bringing up the word 5,000 years. So if we go to 5,000 plus years of gold and silver in existence, what has it been, the ratio for gold to silver? For the most part, it's been calculated based on the amount of silver ounces that come out of the earth for every number of gold ounces that come out of the earth. And that's been between 9 to 16 ounces of silver ounces, so every one ounce of gold. So why such disparity? Why, Why that enormous range right now? Silver is the Achilles heel of central banks. Silver is the people's money, whereas gold is the money of countries. It's the money of governments. And they're the ones who can, who can move around tons of gold, whereas the people transact in silver. Keeping that silver, perch, that, that silver price denominated in dollars down as far as possible keeps the popularity and the use of the, in this case, the world reserve currency, the fiat dollar, in use. It keeps its popularity up. And that's why it's important for for the, the powers that be to suppress the price of silver. Uh, in this case, whether we're going back to the time of the founding fathers, it was nine to, nine to one, or we're going back to Queen Elizabeth, the Elizabeth, Elizabethan time when England ruled the world and it was it was about 12 to 1, 12 to 16 to 1. Uh, whether we're going back to the Greeks or the Romans, it was closer to 9 to 1. Um, when Portugal and Spain ruled the world, it was less than 9 to 1. So in all these different times, gold and silver has been 9 to 16 to 1. And right now, it isn't just the creation of digital uh, dollars on a screen that are in turn purchasing made-up stock and bond prices on made-up corporate uh, valuations. Um, It's also the suppression of the gold and silver price, but especially the silver price. So if they are suppressing this, and this is an extreme between, I think, the highest it's ever been, 80 to 90 to 1, um, can the markets correct themselves, or will they continue to suppress this forever? The reason that that, uh, that I'm here speaking to you right now, and the reason that I'm touting the importance of the of, of putting our savings in the form of metals, not buying gold and silver, but actually transferring our savings from a paper fiat note, it's a promissory note, into actual gold and silver that we can touch, is because of that very reason. There will come a moment when all things will revert back to their intrinsic value, and that includes stocks, bonds. Uh, corporate uh, companies, uh, businesses, real estate, everything will return back to what its actual value is. And that also includes the dollar, the dollar, what its actual value is. And when that happens, we're going to see, uh, not, not when that happens, but as we get closer to that happening in small steps, incrementally, we're going to see silver once again catch up to gold or gold revert back towards silver, one of two. That's just the law of nature that must be followed and must be reverted back, 
no matter what man's manipulation does, nature will come back to what it is. So, yes, that will return. And what is the nature um, um, gold to silver ratio? Again, it's nine, nine to 16 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. That's what I thought. I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that clarity. All right. Yes. And also, um, I was curious, um, in the last couple of years, who has bought the most gold um, up in the pla- on the planet in 2018 or 2019? Who's been buying it? Here's the contradiction. So although the central banks uh, have told their smaller banks and then in turn their financial planners, as well as the media and their, their trained academics and economists, not to buy metals. Here in America, less than 1% of 1% of people have physical precious metals. And it's mostly because it's an unpopular topic. Uh, there's no economist, and again, there's no financial planner, or, or not many I should say, that are out in the general marketplace that are out there advertising the importance of holding savings in the form of precious metals. And this all stems from the tree of central banks. The central banks have have unpopularized it generationally so that our parents' parents don't even know too much about it. They should, but they don't. And so, but if that's the case, then why is it central banks have been the biggest buyers of precious metals, gold specifically, during 2018 and right now 2019 is, is looking like it's going to turn out to be the same. So although they're saying don't buy precious metals, it's what they're in fact doing. And, and then beyond the central banks themselves also, we've had Russia and China buying gold for, for the last 10 years plus. Uh, but now more recently, and India also, but, but now more recently, India in bigger amounts, the Philippines, Poland, Mexico, Turkey, Kazakhstan, Australia, Japan, all the countries are moving forward and buying precious metals, as are the central banks. So this is a situation where the, the, the power is that be called a sheep and and to this degree they're shearing us because of our own our own ignorance that they're keeping from us regarding the importance of precious metals. So it's central banks, they are the they've been the biggest buyers, net buyers of gold for twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen. So all these countries are doing this as financial insurance and uh, so we should be watching them and the clues are right before our eyes and do as they do, right? We should absolutely be be not doing what Forbes doesn't tell us this, the economic news on MSNBC and CNN, our very newspapers, LA Times, New York Times, the, the business section, the economic sections, for whatever reason, they don't, they should all be saying, run and get some precious metals as, as at a very bare bones minimum as a form of insurance against any potential problems. Again, you and I have talked about this, Don. We have car insurance. We don't want to use the car insurance. We don't look for a car accident. We have health insurance. We don't want to get ill, but it's there just in case. Well, the precious metals can serve in the same capacity. We're going to buy them for our own safe being, for our own well-being. We hope that everything remains. We trust that everything remains abundant and fruitful and beautiful. But should it not, we're going to be just fine should it not. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. So what happens if the gold and silver prices actually go down? People say that. Pe- people, uh, we're, we're not getting into precious metals to keep an eye on it every minute, although I admit, Don, I do. <laughs> uh, but I don't do it because I become concerned if it goes up a dollar or it goes down two dollars. I do it because I, it, it's it's a... It's, uh, it's a Geiger for me to measure how things are at the micro and macro level. It's a, it's a measuring tape to me of, of what the foreign countries and, and foreign governments are doing with the precious metals, what's happening here locally in my marketplace within our country. It measures those things. We want to buy precious metals for our, for our savings, and in the same manner as we've become – normalized into seeing our stocks go up and down, we don't lose our heads over it. And yet, for whatever reason, people who are new stackers into the metals, they'll go ahead and buy the metals at, let's say, the, the, the silver at $19, 
and it drops to $17. And they'll lose their head. And yet the stock market that day may have lost $20,000 and their physical uh, metals that they have in their possession has lost $100. But they'll make a big deal about their precious metals, physical holdings, depreciation versus what the stock market's at. We want to buy precious metals as a form of insurance, and we want to put it away and get it out of our reach so it's there just in case we ever need it. And and we want to treat it uh, in a mature way. We don't want to lose our heads and sell when it when it drops. In fact, it's the opposite. Should it drop, I'm going to say what every financial planner says about the stock market, which is buy the dips. That is what I do. That is what I suggest people do. And in this manner, we um, we treat it in a uh, in a mature way. We don't lose our heads if it loses a dollar or two. So that, that's what now we I do. know we're getting close to our time, but I do have another question. And if this one uh, requires more uh, clarification, then we can save it to the next show. But on the opposite end of it, um, it right now, what one to three percent of the population is buying gold and silver? <laughs> like nobody. And so what if all of a sudden everyone starts buying gold and silver? What's going to happen? So, Don, I'm going to clarify that. It's 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 a lot less than 1%. It's about 1, 1% of 1% of the American population is buying precious metals. It's a lot less than 1% to 3%. If it were 1% to 3%, right now the metals prices would be probably three times as high as they are, maybe more. One to three percent is a very large chunk of our of our American population. It isn't that way as of yet, which means that right now the prices are still on the floor because there's there's a sheer not not non knowingness of of the importance of the precious metals, not knowing the Federal Reserve, not knowing fractional reserve lending, not knowing the true value of the dollar, not knowing the difference between currency and money and an asset. Um, so. Our being naive on these topics is what keeps us from buying precious metals. Now, your question was, what would happen if the metals were to rise in price? No, what if everyone started? What if the percentage of people that were buying gold and silver drastically went up? They started chasing gold and silver. That will absolutely happen because in every single civilization before us, the collapse of any empire before us, the collapse of any of any peoples before us, that is what happened every time, and it'll happen again. So first I'll answer what happens when that happens, and then I'll come back to the why. So when everyone becomes awakened to the importance of precious metals by realizing that the paper that we're using is nothing more than paper, and it reverts back to its intrinsic value of the value of paper, which is nothing more than ink on, on, these, on these promissory notes that we're exchanging back and forth. When people rush to the, to the metals, they're going to rush out of equities. They're going to rush out of derivatives, which means they're going to try to sell out of their 401ks, their CDs, their mutual funds, whatever their allocation of savings has been for a lifetime. And they're going to rush into the very small window of precious metals. Now, naturally, they'll also run into the ETFs for, uh, for, for, for ETF-traded gold and, stock, gold and, and, and uh, silver. And those will rise as well. That's what dictates the price of the physical metals now. But at some point, there's going to be a, a disconnect between what the paper value of gold and silver is versus what the actual physical price of gold and silver is. So when people rush towards it, they're also going to rush ultimately first into the paper, gold and silver, and then into the physical when they realize that the paper, gold and silver, is, is just another promissory note. It's another certificate that says you hold, you own a thousand ounces of silver, let's say, but it's something that, that they cannot exchange for a good end service. They can't purchase something with that. So they'll rush to the precious metal, saying that that'll be the purchasable uh, form of money. When that happens, it'll make the metals explode. Um, we don't want that immediately. We don't want that at all if we can help it, because right now the dollar rules the world, or dollar is still the king. But that, that inevitably is going to happen, because think about it, Don. The, the central banks have, in fact, removed time from the equation of profit. The banks have always taken our money 
and they've paid us back a small percentage for for holding our money. And then in turn, they've gone ahead and lent it out at a higher interest rate. And so all this time, the longer the, the loan, the, the better their return. And this has always been the case. But now we're going towards zero interest rates, which means there's no more return on investment over time. So time and profits is gone. And when you remove time from the equation, you remove value. You remove the, the, the lending institution's ability to earn over time, which makes banks insolvent from that perspective. It makes banks unnecessary. And that's what we're going towards. We're going <laughs> towards a world that's going to be cashless, where banks are unnecessary, and now it's a global fiat system that the people are going to awaken to that they're going to see, well, hold on, what is a real asset versus what is a make-believe? What's a liability versus versus a, a property, a treasury, a security? Um, all this knowledge is coming out right now, and it isn't just you and I speaking about it. The average person is asking intelligent questions now. Um, I, I, went, I went around in a big, big circle there, but what I'm getting at is... No, you did great. You did great in one will, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that the metals will rise for these reasons. Go ahead. You know, the question that uh, the average person always asks me is things like, oh, well, if gold was so important, then why aren't they telling us to buy it? It's like it's, <laughs> they don't want you to buy it. <laughs> they don't. They don't because some of the, if you, Don, if you were to ask, okay, if they're printing all these digital digits, if they're printing all this money, from the corporations to the central banks to the to the sovereign countries, or, or to the elites, if you want to say, what are they doing in turn with all this paper that they're printing? Because it's not it's not bleeding down to us at, at this level. Well, they're in turn they're buying real assets, they're buying real properties and paying out paying them outright. They're buying real businesses, real uh, land producing uh, properties. I'm sorry, uh, money producing lands, farmland. Uh, land with minerals, with oils, etc., and of course they're they're going big into precious metals, and and that's gold, silver, platinum, uh, um, palladium. I was going to say plutonium. I mean palladium. Um, they're they're going into these into these precious metals, and they're hoarding them, and they're telling everyone else, which is us, to continue playing with the paper money. They're telling us it's real, and all the while they're they're inflating the need for the paper and for the banks themselves to go away. <laughs> Uh, so, but but that's what they're doing, and we should follow suit. Unfortunately, our media isn't there to tell us and warn us. Hey, guys, go out and get your precious metals because that's that's going to be your saving grace. In fact, they're doing the opposite. They're saying continue buying more equities and more derivatives in the form of CDs, mutual funds, stock market, etc. So. It's the big illusion that we're trying to help you guys be aware of. You know, it's that big distraction tactic. You know, look over here, not here. Don't do as I say, not as I do. Amazing. Yes. So as we close, what would your tip of the day be? So I do want to end on a really nice tip, but I'm going to add one last thing. Today, Monday, I heard this weekend that the repo market, which is the – the Fed getting our treasury to print dollar bills to keep all of our banks solvent so that they have liquid cash to lend to one another, that the repo market is going to be a, a norm from now on. From this point forward, it's going to be something that is part of, of our entire uh, American economy now. But beyond that, uh, Chairman Powell voiced the QE, quantitative easing, uh, well, and also our president, Donald Trump, has also requested it, that potentially in November we're also on top of the repo market uh, uh, buybacks, we're also going to have quantitative easing coming into play. Now, they're saying it's going to be a smaller quantitative easing. Uh, it'll, it'll be in the billions for sure, but it'll start small. And as you and I have talked numerous times, once you, start, once you open up that spigot, you cannot turn it off. Once you start printing in order to buy the the interest interest rate rates the interest payments on the last loans then you'll have to continue running that that liquid to continue to pay for the interest payments of the, the other previous loans that paid for the previous interest rates before that it's just never ending so from here on forward 
there's just going to be a, a bunch of printing. And it is in America alone. It's going to be every single country doing the same thing at the same time. So how do I turn that into a good, <laughs> into a good, uh, a good ending? Um, the good ending is we have time. This is going to happen slowly, drop by drop. And uh, we're going to see some obvious hiccups along the way. But as this continues, we have time to protect ourselves, to be our own central bank, to act like them, to do what they're doing. They're buying precious metals. Uh, let, us not, let us not trust the experts. Let us be responsible for ourselves. Because ultimately, like you and I have spoken, only we can save ourselves. No one is coming to save us. We have to be responsible for ourselves. We have to put, up, put on our, as they say, big boy pants and big girl pants and take action. And that's why you and I are here. And through 7K Metals, we can help everyone basically help themselves. Correct, Don? Exactly. I'd like everyone to contemplate today what brings you joy. And for both AG and myself, one thing that brings us joy, our shared vision, is to help others um, with provide help others by providing life-transforming and empowering information that can really shift their future for the better. And that's, as you can hear from this show, it's just so enlightening, so empowering, so thought-provoking. So as we close today's show, we want to especially thank our show sponsor, silverpreparedness.com. And when you go and visit that website, you're going to see some very thought-provoking information that's going to continue to answer those questions that have always pondered you and make sense of what's really going on behind the scenes with the dollar. So head over to silverpreparedness.com today, and guess what? The icing on the cake is if it feels like a fit to you, then AG Leveraged will also be part of that and be a mentorship program. So that's a win-win scenario for anybody, and you don't want to miss out on that. (laughs) So thank you again so much for this amazing segment, AG, and your profound insights. And until our next segment, we'll leave you for this, this Monday. Be so happy that when others look at you, they become happy too. Bye for now.